It's incredible to think that an India-Pakistan game would start with a discussion over what friendship gesture they want. Do you know, do we put our hand on our heart? Do we go down on our knee? Think about all the kind of bullshit that goes around these sorts of games. The hyper-nationalism, the talk of nuclear bombs and one billion eyes. And it's just Rohit Sharma talking to Baba Azam going, what did we agree on again? Are we, are we doing that now? There's something kind of nice about that. This is just a bunch of 22 people who happen to represent, you know, this incredible rivalry. This is the last knock. My dad refuses to tell me what this means. And in some ways you get the feeling that this is really a game that is changing a little bit, especially for the players who play it. Not so much for the fans and for other people, but realistically, the players are just playing another game. Maybe for India that happened a couple of years ago, but with Pakistan winning the Champions Trophy, it feels more like that for them as well. Of course, winning against India in a World Cup was still kind of a big deal. And so realistically, how lucky are Pakistan that the ICC changed this from the World T20 to the T20 World Cup? Otherwise, they'd still be sitting on a duck when it comes to World Cups against India. So one of the weird things about this game is that generally when Indians come to a World Cup, they've seen all the best bowlers in the world. They've faced them a lot. They've gone up against them. They haven't actually faced Shaheen Afridi because, of course, he is not in the IPL. Although, obviously, a few Pakistani players have actually played in the IPL at times. So over the last few years, the only Pakistani players we've seen are people like Imran Tahir, who's gone on to represent South Africa. It's all a bit weird. But for the Indians, playing in the IPL is great. You might only get one season of Mitchell Stark, but at least you get up to go up against him. And chances are, if you haven't faced him in the IPL, you'll face him somewhere else. And the same with all the best other bowlers around the world. But Shaheen Afridi is the world's best first over bowler. Not power play bowler, he's almost specifically a champion at just that first over. And it's because he's fast and he's left arm and he gets a lot of swing. And he's basically unplayable in that over. And it's not an easy over to take wickets in either. And yet he takes them at a better average than 20, which is absolutely insane. It's not that he gets terrible after that. I mean, he's a fantastic T20 bowler kind of all the way through the game. It's just that he's at his absolute best in the first over. Although, to be fair, in this case, he was at his absolute best pretty much all the way through the game well until that last ball Rishabh Pant and the one hand is I kind of like the way that Rishabh Pant went about his batting today he he kind of accumulated a little bit until he set up bowlers and then he went for them and it makes sense from a biomechanical point of view you know if you're not quite to the position you need to be out you can stretch further with the one hand but the ability to hit a six doing that especially over the long boundaries at this particular game is just incredible the ability to hit two sixes doing that off Hassan Ali who's been one of the world's best T20 bowlers for a long time or at least one of the world's best T20 wicket takers for a long time is phenomenal in many ways this game was a bit of an anchor off but we'll get to the other anchor later we'll talk about Virat Kohli and we know exactly how he's going to bat in T20 cricket he'll attack the seam bowlers for a little bit he'll knock the spinners around and then he's trying to stay in as long as possible to attack at the death and players like Virat Kohli and Kane Williamson and Steve Smith and Joe Root if they're still in at the death and they're set they can usually score it over two runs a ball because they're Virat Kohli and Kane Williamson and Steve Smith and Joe Root. And and that's kind of what Kohli was banking on. He knew that they were losing regular wickets and he thought if he could get to the end, that's the point he could cash in. And just at that point is when he went out. And that's probably the difference between them making 150 and maybe potentially even getting up to 160, 165. Maybe none of that would have been enough today. But that explosion for Virat is really what they needed if he was going to bat at the pace he did for the rest of his innings. It might have been a normal way for Virat to bat, but it's not his fault that he was batting a little bit slower today. It's hard to tell if this was just Virat being Virat in the middle overs or if it was a little bit of extra caution because of the quality of the Pakistani bowling and the fact that they were losing regular wickets. But either way, India did fall a little bit short and a little bit of Virat magic scoring at the end, which he did at times in the 2016 World Cup, probably would have changed that. It's worth talking about the incredible strength of flexibility of spin that Pakistan have. In- Googlies, Quartasima, Karen, Dukes, Back of the Hand, Red, Leg Cutters, Tisra, Pink, Knuckle, White, Slider, Seed, Heavy, Bounces, Cherry, Length, Pill, Off Cutters, Old, Crimson Traveller, Kookaburra, Hard, Outswing, Second New, Off Spin, Arm, SG, Split Finger, Shiny, Leg Spin, Soft, New, Yorkers, Flippers, Wrongens, Long Hops, Reverse Swing, Half Volley, and Third New. These are just some of the names we use for balls in cricket. Well, Manscaped wants you to be as proud of your balls as you are of the ones delivered by your favorite cricketer. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. 
Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Insert the code REDINCA at manscaped.com. I've actually used this, um, not just something that I'm hawking for fun. And I got to admit, I thought it was a bit silly. And then I went down there and it was exceptional. I honestly feel like a bowl outswing with one nut and in swing with the other. So get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REDINCA at manscaped.com. Manscaped, for the man who cares about his balls as much as the ones out in the middle. Muhammad Hafiz, Shadab Khan and Imab Wazim, they had, you know, three of the four flavors of spin bowling. But they also have three guys who can bat as well. You know, varying levels and not all of them are great. There's also some, some decent fielding in there with Shadab Khan as well. The ability to get frontline spin options who can bat and in Shadab's case certainly be a world-class fielder that's incredible to be able to do I actually think Pakistan probably under bowled them today especially with Virat and Jadeja there I think I would have maybe gone a little bit longer with the spin bowler this is going to be a real strength of Pakistan going forward they're nowhere near having the best spinners but because of the flexibility of the spin that they have and the batting that their spinners also have it's an incredible core of course, it's also worth mentioning that the reason that they didn't use all the spinners is because Pakistan also has great seam options. In fact, you know, they've left home some incredible seam options just because they have so many of them. During the match, I had a look at the high usage T20 bowlers from around the world to see where the Pakistani seam is fitted into that. And there's a lot of Pakistani seamers here, and most of them have incredible bowling averages to go with it. Shaheen Afridi was obviously great today. Harris Ruff didn't even take any wickets, but I thought he was just brilliant. And Hassan Ali had an absolute shocker, but still took two wickets. Pakistan seamers, eh? I thought Pakistan were really good in the field, right up until the last ball. In fact, not even right up until the last ball, was it? It was the ball after the last ball. Shaheen Afridi had actually finished his four overs. Well, at the very least, he should have finished his four overs. But instead, he had to bowl an extra delivery because of a free hit. And at this stage, he bowls another ball that it should have been a dot, or at least a one stolen by, as India were trying to get Hardik Pandya back on stroke. But the ball is thrown back to Shaheen Afridi, who throws the ball at the stumps as viciously as possible. And what should have been zero runs, or maybe one run, ends up being five runs, as there's no one there to back it up, as potentially the fielder who was out on the boundary was already crossing over for the next over. Depending on how you look at it, it was either a gift of four or five runs from Pakistan. Just absolute utter madness. Didn't matter, but it was very funny. Mohamed Rizwan started opening for Pakistan last year. As a T20 player, he has batted in lots of different positions. And it's important to note that he's basically only ever been good at opening the batting. It's not to say that he was rubbish at the other positions, although he was fairly rubbish at most of the other positions. He's like an okay number four if you're in a pinch, but he's clearly a top quality opener. Now, everyone wants to open the batting in T20, so sometimes it's hard to get your chance to go up there. So when he got his chance, he had to take it straight away. Well, since opening the batting for Pakistan, he's averaged over 90. That is in no way sustainable. But it also in no way does any Pakistani fan care about that today. The seventh over of Pakistan's chase went for three runs, and the eighth over went for six runs. This is when Varun Chakravarti and Ravi Jadeja was bowling. This was really India's main chance. Chakravarti's been absolutely brilliant when bowling in Dubai in the IPL. Also, for the same thing we talked about Shaheen Afridi, the Pakistani batters don't get to see much of Chakravarti up unless they watch the IPL on TV. And who doesn't? But it's not quite the same thing, is it? And Jadeja had two right-handers to bowl to. So realistically, there was a few things in favour of India here. The problem really came from the fact that it was around this period that it was clear that there was a lot of Jew coming in. India were handing the ball to the umpire. There were towels everywhere on the field. And that was a bit of a problem. When Jadeja dropped short to Azam and was pulled for six, it's just not really a ball you expect Jadeja to bowl, is it? And it was clear at that point that they just weren't handling the ball as well as they would have liked to. But you also have to give credit to Pakistan. They could have knocked the ball around in this period. And in the next three overs after the two earlier slow ones, they actually went a bit ballistic and they scored 28 runs in those overs. That was pretty much India's last chance of winning. And from that point onwards, Pakistan had the game. And by head the game, what I really mean is that Jasper Bumrah is a factor if you have any kind of a chase. We've seen it for Mumbai Indians and for India many, many times before. He's that good. There aren't that many players that you have to factor in when you're playing in a T20 game. But when you're going up against India, you have to think, okay, from Bumrah, we may only be able to get between 20 and 24 runs, which means we have to be slightly more attacking off some of the other players. Now, there's always a chance you'll get more than that of Bumrah. He might have a bad day or someone might bat brilliantly against him. But what you don't want to have to be able to do is to force the boomer overs. 
Well, Pakistan didn't have to. Once they got those 28 runs, they didn't have to worry about Bumrah after that. In fact, by the time Bumrah came on, there wasn't any pressure left on them and they actually scored quite easily off him. And then there was a bit of an odd thing at the end where Virat Kohli probably kept him away from the bowling when he certainly should have bowled a little bit earlier. But realistically, I think the game was gone well before that. Pakistan needed 7.6 runs and over in their chase to win this game, and Baba Azam scores at 7.68 runs per over in all T20 cricket. Talk about a perfectly timed tempo for Baba Azam. I mean, people quite often talk about how he's a bit too slow in T20, and to be fair, when you look at the numbers, they're not always wrong. He certainly takes the anchor role very, very seriously. But in this particular case, that's exactly what you wanted him to do, and he played it perfectly. Since the beginning of 2018, he averages over 50. And today, if he would have scored at 7.68 runs and over exactly, and averaged 51 exactly, that probably would have been enough to give Pakistan, what, a 70, 75% chance of winning. The fact that he went over and above those just well, that's why they won so easily. His innings was just timed absolutely perfectly. They, Him and Rizwan attacked at the exact moments that they had to, and they just kept India on the back foot all the way through that chase. And after all these years of hearing about how India never loses to Pakistan in a World Cup, well, India lost to Pakistan in a World Cup, and Pakistan didn't even lose a wicket in the chase. It was odd how brilliant it was. I mean, the five buys was about the most Pakistani thing that happened. The rest of the game was clinical and brilliant from Pakistan, and India was just a step behind pretty much from the moment Shaheen Afridi took that first wicket, or maybe the second wicket, but the Shaheen Afridi factor. But there was also something quite interesting that happened at the end of the game. We know that a lot of these Indian and Pakistani players are quite friendly and that they meet up and chat at times, but wasn't it incredible to see MS Dhoni out on the field as his mentor role just chatting to Pakistani players at the end. As I said before, for all the bullshit, this is just 22 players, or 22 players and a mentor. There are going to be some Indian people who are very upset when they're lost, and obviously there are quite often Indian people who are very upset when they're lost. But when it comes down to it, it was a cricket game and Pakistan played better. But when it comes down to it, it was a cricket game where Pakistan just played better. This game may end up being referenced as a historic first win for Pakistan in a World Cup over India. It's also just a T20 game early on in a tournament that went Pakistan's way. Mm -hmm.